Now a little bit more about Viking. We do sail on seven continents, 96 countries, 466 ports, five oceans, 20 rivers, and five great lakes now too. So, and what's important about all these numbers? Of course, it kind of tells you, first of all, that we sail the world, right? We sail rivers, we sail oceans. We also go down to the Arctic. We go all the way up to Iceland as well. Um, so, but what's important about all these numbers is the 466 ports is really that Viking brings you to the heart of the destination. It's now, don't get me wrong, the ships are beautiful um, and they're, we're gonna make, it's a very comfortable atmosphere that I'll tell you about more about the ships and show you some pictures of those as well. But really it's about the destination. It's about being a curious traveler and learning about the history, the art, the culture and getting right to the heart of the destination. And that's really what Viking gets, it gets you close to the destination at, with those 466. 66 ports. Uh, we have prime docking locations around the world um, to get you right there. And literally you get off the off our ships and you're right there, right in right in the destination. You can start walking around, go to the markets and things like that. It's it's really, really an awesome experience. Now, the Viking philosophy, kind of our promise to you, no matter where we sail, whether we're sailing in Europe, whether we're sailing in, you know, Alaska, whether we're sailing even the Mississippi now, of course, it, it, we never waver, it never changes. We, we don't try to be everything to everyone. That's just not who we are. We are, like I had already said, a destination-oriented cruise line. We offer a very highly inclusive product, an efficient, we're an efficient operator so we can pass the savings on to you. And we hire the best staff in the industry. And really what that means Means. Obviously, I'm part of the staff, right? I'm not necessarily the crew on board, but our crew on board, it we we ha, we really really value them and we treat them like family. They treat my my company treats me like family, so they in turn turn around and treat you like family when you're on board with us. So it's really really a very comfortable feeling while you're on board. And honestly, I, I can say that we're super super proud to say that we we hire the best staff because we have the best retention in the industry in the cruise industry overall because our staff we treat them like family, so they come back year after year after year. So we're really, really proud of that. Now, one thing that I, I really like to say, because of course we're mid Midwestern, you know, country, we're very country club casual while we're on board because of that serene Scandinavian spaces on board. We have the light filled spaces. You can see kind of in these pictures here, the light woods, the floor to ceiling windows, that sort of thing, very elegant touches, um, kind of just really bring out that Viking heritage and which I honestly kind of feel like it's very, like I said, mid Midwestern of us, um, there, it makes us feel very comfortable in this part of the world because we're there we have a lot of Norwegians in our area and that sort of thing and of course that's the Scandinavian coming out in in the Viking in the Viking brand and on the Viking ships so it's you'll see a lot of the art and literature and history as well while you're on board and just kind of the relax relaxation is really of utmost importance while you're on board our ships all right. What Viking really is proud to say as well is what we are not. What, there are what there's a lot of things that we absolutely are, but we are also not. We don't have casinos on board because we sail so close to the destinations. We can't have casinos on board because ships that have casinos have to sail so far out at sea to even open those casinos. So there you will not find a casino on board. There's obviously no smoking or anything like that. No children under 18. It's all adults only. And I'm not going to go through this entire list, but there's absolutely no lines. That one's really, really important because a lot of, we, we're a small ship cruise company and you're you're never going to have to wait in line to go to dinner. You're never going to have to wait in line for anything at all, really shore excursions or anything. Um, it's That's why we're the small ship cruise company. You're going to be very, very comfortable when you're sailing with us. Now, we also say no nickel and diming, no formal nights, butlers or white gloves. If you're looking for that, you're not going to find it with Viking. You're not going to find a butler um, or anything like that on any of our ships. And one of the more important ones that I like to note here is no entrance fee for the spa. We do have spas on our expedition ships. I'll mention this later as well as, as well as our ocean ships. And there's you can walk into the spa. You can use the sauna. You can use the the um, hot tub as well and you can use those use those things and not pay a dime so the, the other services of course um, and I'll talk about this later the other services at the spa if you want a massage or a facial an actual service at the spa you do pay for that obviously but um, but we'll talk about the spa in a little bit as well but those are all the other no things what we are not right 
Okay. Now the Viking inclusive value, really it's everything you need, plus ability to kind of customize your itinerary, customize your vacation with your Bursch travel advisor. We include one shore excursion at every port of call. So it doesn't matter if you're on ocean or if you're on expedition or if you're on our river ships, every single port of call, you will get that included excursion. It's typically kind of a, either a coach or a walking tour of the city. It gives you nice orientation of, of where you're at. Maybe you want to do some shopping later. It's usually first thing that that first morning, right when you're in port, it's usually that morning. Um, or you can choose to not do that and do your own thing as well. We do have offer optional excursions that are paid that you that, that are paid that you can book with your um, burst travel advisor as well. So there are several options. You can do the free included one, optional ones, or just do your own thing as well. Of course, all onboard meals are absolutely included. That in that also includes the specialty dining on ocean. So we have specialty restaurants on our ocean ships and that that is also included. The only thing you have to do is is um, make a reservation for those for those restaurants. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, multiple dining venues, as I just mentioned, I'll go over that a little bit when we talk about ocean, but wine, beer, soft drinks is also are also included at meal times. Now, if you want beverages kind of outside of those meal times, let's say you like that to have a little happy hour before dinner, or maybe you like to stay up later at night, then I definitely recommend talking to your burst travel advisor and booking the beverage package. We do offer that as well. The beverage package is really, really reasonable. It's only $150 per person. It's very, very, very cheap. It, we, I promise you, Viking does not make any money on that. And really, it's if you, it only covers it covers if you drink maybe two or three beverages outside of those meal times. So if you're not, if you don't think you're gonna drink those two or three beverages outside of meal times, then don't bother with it. Like you don't even have to get the beverage package necessarily. But if you think you're gonna do it, then I definitely think it's worth it. So something to keep in mind. Now, bottled, bottled water, coffees, teas, we have little stations for that, that with the basically a little machine, you can just choose what kind of coffee you want uh, or tea, that sort of thing. Free Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, of course, first class hotels, if you do pre and post, and we'll talk about that when we uh, talk about the itineraries that come, coming up and all port charges and government taxes and things are already included. So we're not going to say, here's your cruise fare, here's your port taxes, here's your government fees and all this other stuff that you have to keep shelling out money for. No, you pay for your Viking voyage. And, and that is it if that's all you if that's all you need um is biking biking air and things like that you can book with your burst travel advisor as well all right so moving on we'll get to the fun part okay here's the fun part we get to talk about some itineraries we get to talk about a few de de destinations and some fun things you get to do um you'll have to excuse me my kitten she's 12 weeks old she wants to play with my keyboard <laughs> i tried closing the door but apparently she knew she knows how to open it Okay, the Grand European Tour. <laughs> um, the Grand European Tour is 15 days with 12 guided tours. And one thing when I go through these itineraries, I'm going to point out here on a, on a few things is these 12 guided tours are those 12 free and in, include included shore excursions. So keep in mind, every itinerary we go to, we go through is going to say the number of guided tours. And those are the, the, the free shore excursions. Now, this one is going to visit four countries. Um, and in any of these itineraries, you can also, um, you can also do in the reverse, excuse me. So you can start in Amsterdam and end in Budapest, or you can start in Budapest and end in Amsterdam. Now, 15 days might be a little long. So the next two itineraries I'm going to go through, um, are going to basically cut this itinerary right in half. So keep that in mind. You're like, oh, 15 days might be a little too much for my first one. But hey, if if you can't decide if you want to do the Rhine or the Danube, well, you can do both on this one. That's what's really, really awesome about the uh, Grand European Tour. It kind of it combines both of those both of those rivers and historical historical places to visit. So a few little things I want to point out actually on this Grand European Tour. You're going to see this see this on several itineraries that we mentioned coming up or I mentioned coming up. But um, Amsterdam, you'll notice is your embarkation city. Now I definitely definitely recommend doing a pre pre extension in Amsterdam usually two or three nights in Amsterdam kind of get your your feet under you again you know after the get the jet lag um out of you that sort of thing and spend a few nights in Amsterdam get, exploring the city because if you come the same day that the the cruise the you know the embarkation day you won't get any time to spend in Amsterdam because we take off for Kinderdijk the next day 
or that, that night for the next day. So I definitely recommend to spend some extra time in Amsterdam. If you've never been there, it is an absolute, absolutely beautiful, stunning city. Uh, lots of bikes, go on a little bike ride, um, discover the canals and the different, the historical city of Amsterdam. Very, very beautiful. Now, um, Kinderdijk is one of those, another port I wanted to mention. Kinderdijk is one of those, um, those cities that's known, known worldwide. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it, um, pictures of Kinderdijk because they're known for their windmills. It's a UNESCO Her World Heritage Site there in Kinderdijk. They're, most, they're, they're the most pictured, um, most pho photographed, excuse me, windmills in the entire world. Um, and you can go and you can take, there's an optional excursion there. There's, I believe, an e-bike tour out to Kinderdijk as well. Um, I haven't been on this part of this itinerary yet. So, um, but I've heard it's, it's, I've heard it's amazing. So definitely, um, definitely take advantage of that in Kinderdijk. Now, Cologne is what another fun city I like to talk about. A very, very historical city with its Roman, Roman cathedrals and obviously historical for the, the, the wars and that sort of thing there as well. But Cologne is also known for its kind of eclectic, um, eclectic culture and that sort of thing, kind of very laid back culture. Um, definitely take some time and go to one of the pubs, but I'm, I'm because you can see me, I'm on video. I don't actually have um, a, one of our beer steins. But if I did, let's pretend my water bottle here is a beer stein. So let's say you went to one of the pubs, right? And you're, you're enjoying it with your friends and you're, you're having a beverage. And, and the tradition in Cologne isn't like it is here back in the States, right? Back in Minnesota, if you went to just a regular pub or craft brewery or something like that down the street, um, where they ask you if you want a refill, right? So they'll go, hey, would you like a refill when they notice it getting low? Hmm. Would you like a refill? No, you know, in Cologne, they'll, the, your, your beer gets empty and they just automatically refill it. And then it gets kind of close to the end and they'll automatically refill it again. So just, I give you that heads up. Um, so if you're visiting Cologne, just be careful. <laughs> we want to make sure you get back to the ship safely. I say Cologne is a dangerous city. No, what I mean by that is obviously just you know, obviously take, have as much beer as you'd like. They'll be tallying all your refills for you in the back, but um, it's a fun city. Um, and it's a lot of, it's a, lot, a great city to kind of see the history there as well. Um, I'll, I'll be, re revisit Regensburg in a different itinerary. Budapest, anytime you see um, in our itineraries where there's the same city listed twice, like you see here, Vienna is listed twice and as well as Budapest, that means there's an overnight. So you get twice as much time in that city. And those are two cities you definitely want more time in because they're absolutely stunning cities. All right, now moving on, we're cutting that Grand European tour in half. And this is the first part of that Grand European tour. This is the Rhine getaway, Amsterdam to Basel. Now, you, like I said, you can do it in reverse. It's Basel to Amsterdam as well with the six guided tours in eight days here. Now we visit those same those same cities, Amsterdam, Kinderdijk, Cologne. Now a few other cities I, I actually just visited. I was just here on part of this itinerary in, um, in October. Um, I was in Strasbourg, France, and I did an e-bike tour down to the Black Forest. Unbelievable! If if that's something that you are interested in doing, and now you don't have to be remotely athletic to go on an e-bike. It basically just it takes it has a little motor on it and it pushes you the entire way so don't even worry about that basically the the requirement is you probably have to know how to kind of ride a bike but other than that it don't worry you don't have to be athletically inclined or fit whatsoever um to do those e-bike things there are clearly a lot of other things to do in Strasbourg France too that's just one of the things that I did um Brysac, Germany is also known for its black forest cake I was also in Brysac um and did the Oh, I'm sorry. Strasbourg is where I did the flavors of Alsace and Brysac is where I did the e-bike tour, but I'm sure they, <laughs> I, I, I got those switched up. Um, but, um, Brysac is where I tried the, of course, the black forest cake, um, cake there is absolutely phenomenal. There's a little liqueur in it, little cherry flavoring. It has layers between the cake. I'm not a big dessert fan. I'm not going to lie, but it was mouthwatering. Um, absolutely stunning. Um, uh, a great opportunity to have some of their local, what well, the cake that they're known for there in Brysac. Um, in Basel is kind of was what well, well, was that where we ended uh, disembarkation there in Basel. Um, definitely recommend kind of a post ex, post uh, extension there in Basel as well. You can go out to Lucerne, kind of Lake Como area. Um, there's a lot of different, um, we went to like a cheese factory and we went to um, the lint factory, which is right, right outside of Basel as well. So those are different kind of things that you can, you can experience if you do a post extension um, right outside of Basel there. 
All right. Now, The Romantic Danube. I was on this one in July, um, this past this past July. You, this is one of our best itineraries for overnights. Look at all these overnights in this itinerary. This one is eight days, and it is the kind of the second half of that Grand European tour. Five guided tours in three countries. Now, you have an overnight in Budapest. Now, you hear how I'm saying that? It is Budapest. They actually tell you that on that, that free excursion. They'll say, it's not Budapest. We're not pesty. That's what they like to say. <laughs> so it is Budapest. It's Buddha on one side of the river and Pesht on the other. One's kind of more modern part of the city. I, I, I hate to even say modern because it's still very old and historical, but, and one is kind of more historical than the other side, basically. Um, so, oh, here, I'll admit one more person. There we go. In the waiting room. There we go. Um, and Vienna as well. Um, an overnight in Vienna and then an overnight in Regensburg. Now, Vienna, <laughs> Vienna is a, is a, perfect place to go to museums. It's a beautiful place. Obviously Mozart and Strauss, it's very known for a lot of known for its arts and music um, and just culture there in Vienna. It's a lot to take in and it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, in Regensburg, now <laughs> one problem with the area where we, we dock in Regensburg, it is far too close to the old sausage kitchen. You can smell it from the ship. I'm, it's, it smells so, so good. Um, you literally can open the door to your, your French sliding glass door and it smells like, oh, like you just had like dinner. Oh, it smells so good. Anyways, but definitely I have a, a colleague actually from Regensburg he lives in Arizona with his family now, and he uh, grew up there in Regensburg. He's like, Rebecca, you have to go to the old sausage kitchen. Of course, of course I did, but it's that close to where we dock. Literally, you just got to cross the river, and it's really right there on the other side of the river. Um, so definitely take advantage of, of that in Regensburg. Make sure you get some mustard while you're in Germany as well. It's kind of one of those things, maybe some pretzels, um, and take in kind of some of that German heritage there. Now, here's our just, I don't, you know, you don't need to memorize this list. This just kind of gives you a taste of all of our itineraries out there. You don't need to choose the Rhine or the Danube. You can certainly do, um, we do Paris in the heart of Normandy as well. So that's on the Seine River, uh, France's finest, and along the, on the Elbe River as well. So um, Christmas along the Seine, as well as Christmas on the Danube, Christmas markets are really, really big in Europe. Um, obviously, those are starting up here very, very soon, if not already. Um, and Christmas markets are, the Christmas market cruises are open for 23 already as well. All right, and then we also have the Southeast Asia and Egypt um, op uh, options as well. All right, now we're gonna just take a look at the ship, the long ship that we're known for, the Viking long ship. This is where you, what you would take down those rivers. Now we have award-winning state-of-the-art sister ships. So it doesn't matter which ship you're on, literally you can get the same stateroom on a different ship. Um, so, so it's really, really, like I said, it's a very, very comfortable while you, while you get on board. You board while you're on deck two. There's only three decks, so it's really, you can't get confused. It's super easy to get around. The sun deck is where you, you can kind of sit and enjoy when you're on the scenic sailing days. I was on a scenic, scenic sailing day going through kind of the castles and cathedrals along the Danube, and you, we have, you have the same option while you're on the Rhine as well. Now, we're known for that Aquavit Terrace right out front, right out here. Um, we kind of have this squared out off bow out here and allows for kind of more, more space, more comfortable seating out there. And honestly, just, just a more, more viewing area for, for all of you to, to see, to see everything. Now, when we are doing those scenic sailing days and you're, you're up here enjoying the sun on a beautiful day out here, you can sit underneath, of course, these awnings up, up here. And so you can sit in the shade, but there are speakers that our program director will be talking about what cathedral you're looking at or what castles this is and what war it survived and things like that. So you don't, so you know what you're looking at and you're learning along the way. It's really, really interesting. Now, another thing I want to point out while we're on this slide, now it is only 190 guests, very, very small ship, right? Um, all of the staterooms are exterior staterooms. We have no inside staterooms whatsoever. It makes it very safe to sail with us, and they each have their own ventilation systems. So you don't have shared ventilation systems, shared air between staterooms and between cabins. So just keep that in mind as well. It's very, very safe to sail with us. Now, we do required, we, we require COVID vaccines. We are reviewing that policy, but so for right now, it is required. Um, the COVID vaccines are required, and anywhere the the destination requires it, 
we, we will offer COVID testing for free as well. So definitely talk to your Burst Travel Advisor. They will be made aware and they'll be up to date on absolutely everything that biking might require, um, anything changes that changes come along or as destinations that might require. But anytime you're sailing with us, whether it's on ocean, river, or expedition, if let's say France changes their, their policy tomorrow and you're, you're sailing on our ship, biking will help biking will help take care of that so that is absolutely um, no problem whatsoever now here's kind of a peek at our stateroom this is a veranda stateroom here um you'll see the chairs out there on the on the veranda um i've not actually i haven't had the opportunity to have a veranda stateroom yet i've had a french balcony with french balcony just as the door of course with no chairs out there um but it still offers that oh, amazing fresh air when you when you get up now, a few things, unless you have a pre or post extension, let's say you have a pre, um, pre in Amsterdam, like we talked about, or a post in Basel, like we also mentioned, um, then you will need your converters because you're staying in a, in a European hotel. You'll need your outlets, your outlet converters. So let's say you're um, let's say you have a special hair dryer that you like bringing with us. We have hair dryers in the stateroom, so you don't need to bring one. But if you have one that's that's super special that you want to bring, you you would have to need you would need your converter for the hotel. But you don't you need need it when you sail with us. Just keep that in mind. So if you're only coming to to sail with us, we have 110 and 220 plugs. Um, we have hair dryers hair dryers as available as well. So and we have USB ports. So we have plenty of that stuff available to you where you wouldn't need your your electrical conversion converters but the best part that actually is not even in this picture it's just behind this picture if you can imagine yourself taking a picture of this picture is the bathroom um and then, why is the bathroom important well the bathroom really kind of differentiates viking i feel like um and if if you're in, enjoying or even not enjoying the snow that we're getting the past few days um we have heated bathroom floors Need I say more? It is so fantastic having heated bathroom floors. Um, it is it is absolutely phenomenal having heated bathroom floors. But not only that, we also have heated bathroom mirrors. So when you steam up the mirror, it actually doesn't get steamed up. You can take a shower and actually still get ready in the mirror in the bathroom without it getting steamed up. So <laughs> we've really kind of thought of all the little details. Our founder just wanted to make everything simple, make it super comfortable. You shouldn't have to figure out the remote to your TV. He purposely like redesigned the remote for the TV because he thought remotes were too confusing. I think that is fabulous because they are confusing when you get to a, in a hotel room and all of a sudden you see all these buttons on the remote you just don't even know what to do with it so yeah he made it just simple buttons he made the letters made sure the letters were bigger because nobody wears their glasses in the shower right so he made the letters bigger bigger on all of our shampoos and body washes things like that as well um just kind of a, a thinking of everything to make your make your voyage with us comfortable you can also see the little desk there as well. Lots of space, lots of drawers and that sort of thing for you to unpack. There's room under the bed for your luggage so you're not tripping over it. Um, when you when you go go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and you have you enjoy those heated floors and you come back and trip on your luggage, that's no fun. No, just tuck it right under your bed so you don't even have to think about it the rest of the time. All right, now Viking is very, very proud of this. We were named number one river cruise line by both Condé Nast Traveler and Travel and Leisure, but we were in 2021 and 22, but we were also named number one ocean by both Condé Nast Traveler and Travel and Leisure as well in 21 and 22. For the past two years, it's because of guests like you as well as our awesome travel advisor advisors at Burst Travel and uh, for them voting for us and 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 really just supporting us the past few years. It's been amazing so we're really really proud of the fact that we were named number one for we're the only only cruise line that can say we were number one for both river and ocean so we're very very proud of that now we're going to go over a few things in ocean i know i'm going rather quickly here guys i just want to make sure to go over some quick highlights in ocean and expedition and even mississippi for you as well so all right, here's, here's the ocean ship in comparison to what you just saw on our river long ships. We only have 930 guests. You will not even, you cannot even tell that we have under a thousand guests on here on our, our ocean ships. They were, they're, they're big enough to not feel to not feel crowded, of course, and small enough to get into the, de the heart of the destination. So I'm not going to point out absolutely everything on here, but you'll notice we'll take a look of a, at a few pictures. You'll notice the, um, 
Explorers Bar is right right here, and we're going to take a picture of that. That's that floor to ceiling windows. It is a um, a two floor bar basically. Um, it's a very, very popular place in the evenings. Now you're also going to notice we took the Aqua Beat Terrace from River and we applied it here on the ocean ships. So um, everyone loved that. And what's kind of what we're known for is that Aqua Beat Terrace there. So, and the spa is down here. We'll talk about that in a little bit here as well. All right, this is the three deck atrium and where you will enter the ship right when you first get in, get on, on our ocean ships. Now this, this screen back here, you'll, you'd think it'd be art. It's actually a big gigantic TV screen and the art or picture or photograph or whatever's up there, it does change occasionally as well. So um, in the evenings, you'll see a pianist here, possibly a singer, maybe a dance or two. This is kind of the dance floor as well. Um, and you can join in, um, join in, in, in all that fun in the evenings. Now, this is that Explorer's Lounge that I told you about, like I had mentioned, attention to detail. Viking is well known for that. There, these are the handrails all in glass. They want to make sure that wherever you are, on the ship, you are going to be able to see out those windows, and you're going to see exactly what where we're where we're sailing to, or the um, the fjords in Norway and that sort of thing. Wherever in Alaska, you can see all the the glaciers and that sort of thing as well. So um, this is the first first floor down here, and then you can go upstairs where there's these glass. Um, the glass is in the bar upstairs as well. And it's like I said, a really good hangout spot in the evenings. Now, this is kind of one of the spots. This is called the Winter Garden. This is one of the spots on Ocean Ship. That's kind of just the relaxing, relaxing, relaxing spot. You can go here and have your afternoon tea and kind of just have you know, you know, chat with your friends and that sort of thing. These um, trees are Norwegian Norwegian trees, or that's what they're they're modeled after um, in that light wood, and they're actually um, the wood is from Norway as well, from what I'm told. So. All right, and this is the main pool with the retractable roof. Um, definitely need that retractable roof for the, the cooler days, of course, so you can still enjoy the pool when it's, when it's cooler outside. Great pool area. Okay, and here's a look at the spa. Now, this, like I said, you can use the spa. Um, one thing I want to caveat that with, you can use the spa amenities um, for absolutely no fee whatsoever, but thanks to COVID, unfortunately, you do have to sign up for a time. So that's really the only caveat there. You do have to sign up for a time now. If you want to go in and use the hot tub, you want to use the sauna, that sort of thing, that's fine. No big deal. Just sign up for the time, show up for your time and go use it basically. So um, that's the only thing that they they require now um, thanks, to, thanks to COVID. But um, so keep that in mind. Now I'll, I'll show you another little thing with the spa um, here in a little bit when we visit the spa with, on the expedition ship, a very, very similar spa. Now you have eight dining options, all of which are no additional charge. I had already mentioned that these are all on ocean only, of course. Um, we have um, the main restaurant, of course, is on river as well. But the restaurant Men Freddy's is one of those specialty dining options. I bet you can guess Men Freddy's is, is definitely Italian. You can get some good pasta there. Mamson's Norwegian Deli. Now I would definitely recommend stopping in there at least once. They have the most phenomenal Nordic waffles you will ever ever have. And on the wall is, is uh, our, our founder, Tor Hagen, his mom's recipe for those um, Nordic waffles. And, and if, if you want, just go ahead and take a picture of it. So you can, you can make them at home, but um, it is in Norwegian. So <laughs> if you can translate her handwriting, um, go, go for it. But uh, her recipe is in the, on the wall as kind of the wallpaper. A lot of fun there. And we already mentioned the winter, winter garden where you can go and have some tea, tea there and some little snacks, the chef's table. Now this is kind of one of those specialties restaurants where you can kind of go get your steaks and that sort of thing. Um, so these are the two that you do need to make reservations for and your burst travel advisor can help you with that as well. And then there's the world cafe in Aqua V Terrace. Now the world cafe, I would kind of I don't know, kind of relate that to being a the buffet that you might be used to, but it's not really a buffet. We don't have a buffet on board, but that's probably the closest thing to a buffet necessarily. The World Cafe is what I like to think of more as um, made to order as a, as an example. So you can go there and you can still order a steak or you can, you can order it um, well done or you can order it medium well and then you just go back to your table or whatever that you just, you can get things fresh freshly made or you can you can get things kind of as a buffet option as well but there's everything from when i when i was on board it was everything from you can have a little pizza or you can have a burger or it's destination destination dining 
or you can have something that's a little bit that's a little bit more traditional as well. So that's one thing that's really important while you're on board. Obviously, we want you to be able to eat. Um, we want you, you want, we, we know you're gonna be hungry. What we want you to be able to eat is we have destination dining. Now, even on the rivers, you have a menu and it opens up on the left side of the menu will be all of your kind of traditional, traditional dining options. If you want your steak, if you want your burger, I'm not gonna lie, we have some of the best beef hot dogs I, I'm not a hot dog person whatsoever, but they're really good. Uh, sometimes you're just in the mood for a hot dog, right? Um, but on the right-hand side is all of your destination-focused dining. So that's where you're going to get your, your pretzels when you're in, we're having German night or your stuff from, from France and that sort of thing, some, some delicacies from the destination. We literally um, have chefs go out into the markets, get, get their stuff for the night, for the, for the dinner and that sort of thing, and prepare the meals. So it's, it's um, destination focused dining, but also if you're not in the mood for it, we're not going to let you go hungry. You can have a burger or a hot dog too. <laughs> All right. Or a steak, right? The pool grill um, is a typical pool grill. You can get some nachos and that sort of thing there. And of course, 24 hour room service is available on the oceans as well. Now here are the fun, a few ocean highlights. Now we keep in mind, we have many, many itineraries. I'll go through a similar list that we saw on river, but on ocean. Um, so now um, this is one of our Mediterranean itineraries. Now keep in mind, we have several Mediterranean itineraries. This is um, has a couple overnights, one in Barcelona and one in the Florence Pisa area. It is eight days, five guided tours. Um, those guided tours, of course, are those um, five included shore excursions. Um, and then we'll take a look at this itinerary on the map as well. So like I had mentioned, so here it is going through the med. Um, we you know, start in Barcelona this time, but you can certainly start in Rome as well and do the reverse. So that's just one of I take a that's just one of the itineraries in the med. Now Alaska, we also do Alaska and inside passage. Now I would definitely recommend taking a look at this, this itinerary. It is 11 days talking to your burst travel advisor about adding extensions here, because what you can do is add an extension to, it's a pre or post, depending on which way you do this. If you start in Vancouver, you start in Alaska, you can do a pre or post in Denali National Park, or you can do a pre or post even with Rocky Mountaineer. It's a luxury train line. If you, if you haven't seen those, it's, they're absolutely stunning. So if you really want to extend your vacation and, you know, your, your voyage with us, extend it with Rocky or extend it to go to go to Denali National Park as well. This is the itinerary to do that for sure. Um, so this one has some awesome scenic sailing through the inside passage. Um, Vancouver is definitely a great city to do a post in as well. Spend a few days in Vancouver if you're going up in, a, in, in there or out of there um, for your embarkation um, there in, in Vancouver as well. So like I said, we have the small, we're known as the small ship cruising company. So those, the scenic cruising days, you, it doesn't even matter where you are on the ship. You will have an absolutely amazing view. And then we do um, Iceland as well. We circumnavigate Iceland. So it's round trip Reykjavik. Now I'm from Minnesota as well. I'm sure you guys can hear my Minnesota, Minnesotan accent. Um, but so I am not going to do these justice by pronouncing any of these, these Icelandic names, but I will say Reykjavik. We, we do spend uh, an overnight there in, on embarkation in, in Reykjavik. And of course we end, we end there as well. So you go all the way around um, sailing really close to the destination and seeing all those, those, <clears throat> those awesome fjord cascading waterfalls and fjord landscapes unbelievably stunning iceland's been very 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 popular itinerary for us now here's just kind of a look at a few other itineraries in scandinavia and northern europe viking shores and fjords is very very popular up there and homelands as well stockholm to bergen um, like I had mentioned on that iconic Mediterranean itinerary, we do offer several Mediterranean, Mediterranean itineraries. Mediterranean Odyssey is a couple more days than the iconic one that I had mentioned now. Um, so, but that also is very, very popular. All right. And then one more here. We do Asia and Australia. Australia, New Zealand is one of the ones that sells out quickly. America's in the Caribbean. So of course we come, we come to the Caribbean, the Caribbean and America as well, but you can combine ocean and river too. So keep that in mind. Let's say, mm, I can't decide. Maybe I just want to do both. It's called a butterfly cruise. So basically you can do them back to back. 
So you'll do the Rhine getaway basically as the first part of your cruise. You'll end that and you'll get on Viking shores and fjords for the ocean part of it. Or you can do the Grand European, which is the 15 day and then end it with the Viking fjords on the backside for ocean. So keep that in mind. Now, I always, I always joke about this, but I'm totally serious. You have to be a good sim swimmer if you're going to be doing the river and ocean because we make you swim from one ship to the other. No, I promise we do not make you do that. <laughs> but um, when you do book those, we, we promise we'll get you from one ship to the other. That's one of Vikings, Vikings things. If you, if you book Viking Air, we include the transfers um, through from the, from the airport to the ship. Even if you book Viking post extensions, pre or post extensions, we make sure that you get from the hotel to the ship uh, or from the airport to the hotel, hotel to the ship, that sort of thing. We, we, we um, hold your hand the entire way. Now, a only a few more things here, I promise, guys. I know it's getting, it's it's a late night, that sort of thing. We did just introduce our Viking expedition ships just this year. These are brand new ships, um, the Octantis and the Polaris. Polaris actually just came out just literally a few weeks ago. Octantis has been sailing since earlier this year. These are kind of what I like to call our science ships. They go to Antarctica. They, they go, they're going through the lake, Great Lakes. They go to Duluth. They went, Octantis came through Duluth this just this past summer. A lot of fun. And this is why I call it our kind of our science, science, scientific ships. We always have at least one scientist on board and you can shadow them. You can, it's part of, part of the experience and being on these expedition ships. It's really uh, what I know what, what expedition travel kind of is the connotation that comes with that is like, I'm hiking Mount Everest or anything like that. And I promise it's nothing like that. This is a very soft expedition. It's very much for just the curious traveler. You can follow you can follow these scientists on what they're kind of learning about when they release the weather balloons and what they're researching as far as weather temperature down in the Arctic or, or um, the animals out there and that sort of thing. They're, they're being very sensitive to the environment and that sort of thing and what they're learning. But these are the, the, the um, partnerships that we have um, with the universities and other research institutes to, um, to, to do scientific research on our ships. We have a lab and everything. All right, so these are a few spots on our expedition ship. Now I'll, I'll cover the Nordic bal balcony here shortly. I have a better picture of that, but this is what we like to call the Finsa Terrace. Now when it's, it's nice and cool out, no worries because there's a little fireplace here, but that fireplace is not gonna keep you warm. We all know that, right? But those seats out here are heated. The seats are gonna keep you warm. So the fireplace might be for looks, but the seats are gonna be heated. So those will definitely keep you warm. Just don't stand up right? <laughs> so um, that's what will keep you warm there out there on the Finsa Terrace if you are in the Arctic. This is the Aula. It's our auditorium. This um, floor to ceiling windows, which is which is across our ship, of course. But this is where the, the scientists will do their presentations. They'll, they'll, um, the program director will tell you kind of the, the um, itinerary for the next day, what you're gonna do, that sort of thing. And a screen, you'll, you can kind of see the screen. I'm, I'm pointing like, as if you can see me pointing. The screen, you can kind of see it here up on the ceiling. It's retractable. So it kind of co comes up and covers the windows. But then if, uh, let's say the scientist is in the middle of talking about the penguins or something like that, and there's actual penguins outside, they'll quick put the screen up so you can see them um outside the outside the windows so it's a lot of fun um that they're it's retractable um coverings like well window coverings and everything as well so all right and then the explorers lounge we've already seen this of course in the ocean and we put it on our expedition ships as well and expedition central is kind of where you gather for those um expeditions and those shore excursions i um, mean you can kind of see the data coming in and, and you can kind of learn about all those shore excursions now this is the aquavit terrace now i've talked about this a, a lot it's on our ocean ships we also put had it on our river ships originally and we also put it on these brand new expedition ships as well kind of an out Door indoor space as you can see there the door is open and we have the retractable roof with the pool right here as well just similar to very similar to our ocean ship but now we also have the indoor outdoor pool right here in the middle and then we have three pools out the back now why three pools well the arctic or the nordic way is to have pools with different temperatures so they're all different temperatures now i recommend starting in the cooler one first right and then moving over to the warmer ones it usually ends up being a little more comfortable but um they are three different temperatures so keep that in mind if you're in a hopefully a little bit warmer destination to enjoy those outdoor pools there 
Now, this is the, the spa again on Expedition. It looks a little bit different than where it is on Ocean. Floor to ceiling windows. So even when you're enjoying the spa, um, spa time, you are not going to miss out on anything um, outside either. So I did um, get to tour our Expedition ship when it was in Milwaukee earlier this summer. And um, this door right here, you, that's kind of lit up, is what we call our snow grotto. Now, I get it. We can go outside and get snowed on. But hey, you can get snowed on when you're on our ship. It's Nordic tradition. Why wouldn't you, right? Um, but apparently the Nordic tradition says you need to go from the snow grotto and get snowed on for a couple of minutes, I believe. Then go to the sauna and back to the snow grotto. Sauna, snow grotto. You need to do that three times. Um, and then it's really good for your circulation. It's really good for your, your pores and that sort of thing. Uh, apparently it's a Nordic tradition. Now I know we can just kind of go inside and outside our doors. <laughs> well, I was going to say right now or in January too. Right. Um, but yes, you can get snowed on, on our ship. It's a lot of fun. So you can use that snow grotto, the sauna, the hot tub por portion here, um, and everything at absolutely no charge. You do just have to sign up, uh, for a time. All right, well, the best thing about our expedition ships is our free toys to use on board. Um, our founder, Tor Hagen, is a huge fan of the Beatles. So yes, we have two yellow submarines on board and they are called John and Paul. I'm not even kidding you. Um, a two six-seater submarines. These are very popular and uh, you can book these in advance as well. It's absolutely free to use. Um, there is kind of, you know, a health questionnaire, that sort of thing. We want to just make sure everyone that wants to go in the subs gets back safely, clear, clearly. Um, so we, we take all the safety precautions um, necessary when people go down want to go down in the submarines um the pro zodiacs you that's the, that's the only thing that's probably a little bit i shouldn't say just we we obviously have several crew members and things to help you get in the subs but the subs are the only thing you have to get into when you're out in the water everything else you get get on we have a indoor hangar that's kind of i would say like in the basement if there's a basement of ship but it's downstairs um we have a hangar downstairs it's where our lab is for the scientists but it's also where we keep all our toys and you literally get on these get every get on everything except the submarines um right there in the hangar so it's super easy it's literally walking from walking straight on the ship onto the boat and then we have a slip, slip slipway functionality that takes the boat right out into the water so you don't have to like try to navigate trying to like you know finagle your way onto the sob or onto onto anything and getting off of it or anything like that you get right on and off it right inside the ship it's super super handy and yes, I did say SOB, Special Operation Boat, I promise. Um, SOB is the acronym for that. They are our most popular toy on board because they go out quite often. We have a couple of those SOBs on board um, and more people can get on them, clearly. They're very, very comfortable seats. So it's not like a regular like fishing boat type seat. They're hydraulic. So they, if, if you're in rough waters, it makes it a very, very smooth ride. And if you're a little more adventurous and want to take out our kayaks, we have several kayaks on board as well. They, they're kayaks with pedals in them. So they're not the typical kayaks that you see around here. Obviously, you do get a paddle with it as well. You can certainly use that. But if you choose not to, you can just pedal with your feet, kind of like a, a bike or a paddle boat, you know, that we see around here. And so you have your hands free to take pictures or using binoculars. So it's a lot of a lot of fun. We kind of thought of everything as far as those toys go. Now, as I promised, the Nordic Balcony Stateroom here just it has very similar amenities to our river, what I had showed you as well, or you know, an ocean as well. But then what it, what it means to be a Nordic balcony. It you can't actually walk out on the balcony right here, but the half the window does come down. We're not gonna make you uh, heave it up and down by any means there's a little button right off to the left side over here and you just push the button if you don't want glare in your pictures push the little button the window will come down and you can take pictures and see you know use your binoculars that sort of thing so it, we've there's a basically a little ledge it's almost like a little elbow ledge um that you can kind of lean on and honestly you can put your coffee there or your wine there as well or your binoculars and and your your um, camera or anything is there as well. So we make it super handy to make those nice still pictures um, right out your window. And then if it gets a little too chilly, put the window back up. <laughs> All right. And here's a few of those expedition itineraries. I know we're kind of getting a little bit late here. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll move quickly, but the Antarctic Explorer, we're actually just um, moving the ships now to, to go to to see the, or go down to the Arctic, it is Buenos Aires to Ushuaia. Now, uh, one quick thing I wanted to point out here is day four through 10, it just says an explore Antarctica. Really, what does that mean? 
Well, it means we will stop and we promise we will stop. There will be excursions, time to take out the toys and that sort of thing. But we can't promise because it's the Arctic and the weather is kind of unpredictable down there. They can't promise that we're going to stop here or stop here. So we're going to stop those days and explore and see things and do scientific, uh, do stuff with the scientists and that sort of thing. But they just aren't going to say we're for sure stopping at a location because they, they make that decision based on a day by day basis uh, for safety reasons, of course. We have technology on board for these um, expedition ships too. That the cruising the Drake Passage, it mentioned on the itinerary as well. Um, I'll go back one side just so we can take a peek at that. Cruising the Drake Passage, you gotta do it twice. It is the roughest seas in the world down there. But we have a polar class six ship. No one else, no one else's expedition ship is a polar, polar class six. They're all polar class five. So I can tell you it is unbelievably safe to be on our expedition ships and far more stable. And that doesn't mean that the ship isn't going to rock a little bit um, in those rough seas, but it's not going to rock nearly as much. We have, um, we literally take on water. They're called U stabilizers, U tank stabilizers. We take on water to stabilize, stabilize the ship as well as um, fin stabilizers and everything on board as well. So you can be rest assured that it's not going to rock nearly as much and it's going to be really, really safe going through that passage. Now here are a few um, other itineraries on our expedition ships. As I had mentioned, I I saw, it, I saw our Octantis while it was in um, port in Milwaukee there, but we also go um, to, of course, Canada. Now, one, one thing that I want to make, make sure you're aware of, those toys are, are only available when the expedition ships is, is not, are not in uh, U.S. waters. There's a little thing called the Jones Act that doesn't allow us to use those awesome toys uh, in U.S. waters. So definitely, I recommend kind of this um, Thunder Bay, Milwaukee, these two itineraries right here. So they'll spend more time in Canadian waters. And Canadian, you know, Canadians tend to be a little nicer and they let us use the toys. So, um, so definitely keep them, keep in mind if that, if the toys are a big thing, those free toys, the, the sub and the kayaks and things like that are important to you to look at these Milwaukee to Thunder Bay itineraries to spend more time in the Canadian waters. All right, just a few slides on the Mississippi. Um, it's so exciting. I know there's low water in the Mississippi, but we it'll it'll come back and we'll sail the full full Mississippi again. But um, it's a brand new ship that we just launched this year and this year and I promise you it looks nothing like you've ever seen on the Mississippi before. There's no paddle paddle wheel on the back or anything like that. All right, here's a, a few of those itineraries available on the Mississippi. It does say five, so I'm a liar. There are only four shown here, but it says five because we are, we're offering a holiday one this year. So um, that's why it says five. Now, obviously we're no longer sailing up to St. Paul right now. Not only um, it, low water, honestly, we could have high water too and not make it under the bridges. So it, it just happens, we, we adjust things as, as the weather allows us to, of course. Um, but we're down here in the south right now, down in New Orleans, um, Vicksburg, of course, sailing up to Memphis as well, um, at least through November. So you can do uh, New Orleans and Southern Charms here down in the in the winter months. And then it kind of starts sailing back back up here in kind of June to July time frame when it gets a little warmer up here. Right. All right. Well, now knowing that I'm from Minnesota and at one point in one of my presentations, I said, look, here's St. Paul. Yeah, we know this isn't St. Paul. <laughs> right. Um, I know better. I know my history of Minnesota. This is St. Louis, of course. So this is a view of that Mississippi. And I like to point out um, the Viking Mississippi, of course, that it does not. And we actually have an infinity pool off the back of the ship instead of a paddle paddle wheel on the back of that Mississippi ship. All external state rooms, um, similar to our other ships. And one thing I like to point out here, one thing that's, you don't need to memorize any of these stats. It's just kind of fun to see, see these 386 guests. So it's just under 400, uh, 193 staterooms. Um, the crew to guest ratio is the one I wanted to point out here is 2.6. That is absolutely unheard of in the industry. So it's definitely something we're proud of. And that crew is, is absolutely amazing on our Viking Mississippi. Here's just a peek at a few of the things on our state rooms um, on the Mississippi. They're modeled after our award-winning uh, Viking ocean ships. So it looks very similar, kind of the light filled rooms, floor to ceiling windows, spacious bathrooms, um, and, and attention to detail there on the Mississippi. Now, last but not least, 
If you want to be with us for 138 days, we offer a world cruise as well. So 57 guided tours in 28 countries. So definitely call Burst Travel and get your next world cruise. I actually think this is now sold out um, for, for this, this year, but, but the 23 to 24 obviously is, is, a, is available as well, the 138 days. So definitely keep that in mind. Hey, and if that's even too long, that's 138 days out of Fort Lauderdale. But if you leave out of LA instead, you can shave off about 10 days. 128 days maybe instead. So your decision if you want to leave out of the, the Fort Lauderdale or um or LA to shave off that 10 days. Okay, and this is just obviously the reminder of the, the free airfare through November, of course, and $100 per person shipboard credit that's only available through Burst Travel. And I did mention those um, amenity dates as well, specific dates, specific sailings that are only available through Burst Travel as well. So they have, they have a list of those if that's something that you wanna take advantage of for the $500 shipboard credit as well. So um, I know we're, we're available for questions. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I know it got a little bit, um, it got a little bit long, but definitely, um, definitely put any questions in the chat. You're certainly, you can certainly unmute yourself as well. I don't see any questions right now, but definitely please reach out to your advisor at Burst Travel. They're they're super knowledgeable and kind of can kind of, kind of help you basically narrow down the itinerary that you that you're interested in, in going on. So, um, and we can ob obviously get that shipboard credit, take advantage of that. So 